With the release of the new DLC for Cuphead, thought it'd be quite fun if we took some of the characters, including the new bosses, and we turned them into Transformers. So let's bring these illustrations to life. Our story begins on planet Cybertron, around the start of the war that broke out. As the factions were forming for the Autobots and Decepticons, there was only one place on the planet that seemed to escape this chaos that was forming. That place was called the Energon Isles, a place that was forgotten about over time as they rarely interacted with the rest of planet Cybertron. On the Isle, a young Cybertronian had fallen prey to the binding deals from Devilatron, an evil Cybertronian that had rather unique ability to take the sparks out of those who he made deals with and used them to increase his own power. The Cybertron was known as Cuppertron Alpha, named due to the cup-shaped head in his robot form. That being said, he could transform into a plane that allowed him to have an aerial advantage. Unfortunately, our young and foolish Transformer had lost a bet with Devilatron, and just as he was about to have his spark removed, he offered a deal to the demonic spark-absorbing Transformer. In exchange for not taking his own spark, Cuppertron agreed to become a tracker and collector of sparks. Hunting down the escaped Transformers that had evaded Devilatron's wrath and avoided their sparks being taken, with this, Cuppertron Alpha went to visit wise elder Ketelatron, the great mentor and father figure to Cuppertron Alpha, advised him that the Cybertronians who had made spark contracts with Devilatron may not wish to honour these contracts, nor would they be willing to give up their sparks, who would do anything to avoid their sparks being taken and handed to Devilatron. With this, a quest began for Cuppertron Alpha to collect the sparks of those who had avoided honouring the spark contracts with Devilatron. This quest would leave Cuppertron Alpha into many crazy encounters with some of the most powerful Transformers ever to live on the Energon Isles. In order to complete this quest, Cuppertron Alpha asked his brother, Mugmatron Segma, to help. Mugmatron Segma was a bit hesitant at first, but finally agreed to help Cuppertron Alpha in order to save his spark. Elder Ketlatron sent Cuppertron Alpha and Mugmatron Segma to find the Isles weaponsmith. Porcius Brindor, a merchant that trades items for Energon and upgrades and weapons that have a unique variety of uses and may help them in their quest. And so, Cuppertron Alpha and Mugmatron Sigma set off to capture the sparks of the Cybertronians that had escaped Devilatron's grasp on the Energon Isles. Our first law enforcer of the Energon Isles is known as Winchester Supreme and she was one of the best law enforcers on the Isles until she made a deal with Devilatron. This allowed her to become the best law enforcer on Cybertron, bringing peace to the Isles for what seemed like forever. That was until Devilatron was able to make more and more deals, taking the sparks from the inhabitants. It was around this time that Winchester Supreme left the first and second aisles and only began to enforce on the third and fourth parts of the aisle. Winchester Supreme is what you might call a cowgirl of sorts. Her design is similar to a cow when transformed, but in robot form she looked like she was from the Wild West. Her main weapon was an Energon lasso, which she could regulate the intensity in order to capture or cause damage to her opponents. There is a feature on one of her arms that acts like a giant vacuum that can, and can suck in objects and fire them out. On her feet, there are a set of spurs, which she can use to move fast, using short bursts of speed when they rotate. Over time, Winchester Supreme started to become more and more ruthless in her apprehending of criminals, to the point she became more and more ironclad in the way she maintained peace and order on the fourth aisle. This left Devilatron to be able to take over the third isle and harvest the sparks of the inhabitants of this part of the Energon Isles without any interference. During this time, Devilatron had forgotten about the spark of Winchester Supreme and it wasn't until Cuppertron Alpha and Megmatron Sigma captured all of the sparks on the first three isles that Devilatron remembered about a few stragglers who had escaped to the fourth Energon Isle and sent Cuppertron Alpha to capture their sparks. This was not something Cuppertron Alpha wanted to do. However, 
It turned out that the wording in the contract to save his own spark with Devlatron was vague enough that it meant that Cuppertron Alpha had no choice but to chase the sparks of these remaining Cybertronians. Devlatron pointed Cuppertron Alpha in the direction of Winchester Supreme, saying that this is one who had escaped handing over the spark for the longest time. Out of all of the Energon R residents, Winchester Supreme may not be as legendary or noted as the Guardian of the Isles, but she is far from being easy to deal with. Elder Kettletron told stories to Cuppertron Alpha about a cowgirl law enforcer who once protected the Isles for centuries, ensuring peace and harmony, until one day she up and left, not to be seen from again. And rumour was that after the fourth aisle was isolated, she was on the aisle. He also said that there was a rumour that she started coming more and more focused on protecting that one area for her own self-interests. One of the more powerful and trickier Transformers that managed to escape losing its spark is Grimius Machius, who is able to transform into a dragon-like creature with three heads. As you might have gathered, Grimius Machius is able to use fire in his attacks, allowing him to catch his opponents off guard. In terms of personality, Grimius Machius is actually one of the more kinder Cybertronians, despite his looks. The key feature of Grimius Machius is the fact that he has three heads in his dragon form, allowing him to attack in multiple directions. The weakness, however, is the heads can at times think independently, causing Grimius Machius to be unable to attack due to an internal debate between the heads. In this robot form, Grimius Machius only has one head in control, and this allows him to think rationally and with kindness in his action. One of the surprising things Cybertronians experience the first time they speak to Grimius Machius is the fact that this Transformer stutters when speaking. This has surprised many on the aisle, as it was rare to meet anyone with a stutter. The origin of how Grimius Machius owes his spark to Devlatron is a mystery. It's been speculated that Grimius Machius never used to have three heads, and in his younger days, he wanted to become a powerful protector of the citizens of the Energon Isles. There is a story passed down on the Energon Isles of a three-headed guardian that can fly through the skies and use fire as its attacks fending off a large horde of invading Cybertronians, as well as Cybertronian beasts, from faraway lands. Over time, as the forces stopped attacking the Energon Isles, the Guardian was seen less and less until it became nothing more than a rumour. What many don't know is that the Guardian was in fact Grimius Machius. He had made a deal with Derotron to become a powerful protector of the Energon Isles, in order to fend off the forces that threatened to destroy the peace and harmony that he knew and loved. However, Grimius Machius did not know that the forces were sent by Devlatron in order to trick the young Cybertronian into losing his spark. One of the few knights that exist on Cybertron. Well, one of the last remaining knights on the planet Cybertron. And rumoured to be one of the few surviving members of the Battle of Energon Isles. In terms of appearance, the Lone Knight, as it is known, no one knows his real name. In fact, it's been so long since the Knight himself had used it, he's unsure of it. Only that he is the last of a group that went to slay the Guardian Beast of the Energon Isles. The Lone Knight can transform into a horse-type creature, but mainly stays in his robot form. The reason for this is due to an injury he incurred during the Battle of Energon Isles. The Lone Knight has a rather strange condition. While attacking and battling his opponent with one of his attacks, swinging his sword causes him to overheat and he needs to stop and cool down. It looks like the Lone Knight runs out of energy, but after a few minutes of rest and cooling down, he can attack again with a consistent barrage using his sword. He has a shield that can be used to block attacks from his opponent, and it's rarely seen he has a shield that can be used to block opponent's attacks. And it's rare to see a Cybertronian with a shield, let alone a Cybertronian on the Energon Isles. It's unsure if the shield has any other features, but it does come to show that the Lone Knight 
was one of a select group of Cybertronians that upheld the honour of their clans. The design of this knight is very much as you would expect from a knight, also similar to the characteristics from a Cybertronian game known as Battle Chess, a game where the pieces would transform in a holographic display from chess-like pieces into a robot form and battle it out until one was the winner. It would appear that the game was based on knights and warriors of old that seemed to have left Cybertron, or at least left the public eye for the last millennia or so. The Lone Knight is one of the few Cybertronians with the title King of Games Champion. A title that is well earned. A title that is well earned with his unique skill set of being a part of the games that occur. It should be noted, however, that the Lone Knight can charge his pume with Energon, which allows him to use it as a lethal weapon, not only for defending against attacks, but also using it as an attack. He can even fire Energon bites upon the plumes at his opponents. A formidable foe, one who has a strange skill set. He's harder to deal with than most other Cybertronians on the Energon Isles. He even managed to escape from the Guardian Beast, who has the real identity of Grimius Machius. Escaping from Grimius is a feat on its own, and one that many have failed to succeed in. Although the Lone Knight has been injured and suffers from the effect of his injuries, it's still an amazing feat to survive the encounter of the Guardian of the Energon Isles. It is however unknown at this time what deal was made with Devilatron, only that the Lone Knight has managed to prevent Devilatron from taking his spark for the last millennia. Maybe since the Lone Knight has been unable to lose in the King of Games contest and still remains the title of champion, Devilatron has been unable to claim the spark of this warrior. Ruler of the underground part of the Energon Isles, Devilatron is the most powerful and dangerous Cybertronian to live on these isles, and is extremely sly and cunning. He is a master of deception and often uses his skills to get the sparks of the inhabitants. By making bets and granting deals with other Cybertronians, Devilatron is able to transform into a number of alternative forms, which is rather unique for a Cybertronian. Some have two or three forms, but that's the rarest case. As a result of collecting the sparks of other Cybertronians and incorporating them into his own spark, Devlatron gained the ability to change into a number of the forms of his fallen victims. This makes him the most powerful and dangerous Cybertronian known, although there are some weaknesses for this Transformer. Devlatron's original ability is a binding virus that activates when he makes a deal with another Cybertronian, and certain conditions need to be met before he can take their sparks. If the conditions are not met, this will prevent Devlatron from taking their spark and integrating it with his own. If he defeats a Cybertronian this way, he will not only be able to merge their sparks with his own. A side effect of the virus is that Devlatron could control the Cybertronians like they were mindless drones or zombie transformers with no will of their own. He often put his victims to work within the underground isles and they were never seen off again. Devlatron looks more like a devil or a demon in his robot form. In his robot form, he has two horns on his head, and he uses a trident as a weapon, almost completely black in colour, with a set of yellow eyes on his head and part of his body. Devlatron is quite plain and almost weak looking for a Cybertronian in his robot form. However, as with most things, looks can be deceiving. His power consists of the sparks from hundreds and thousands of the inhabitants of Energon Isles over the last few millennia. There was once a follower of Devlatron, he managed to gain his trust and discovered that if Devlatron was defeated, each time he lost he would lose a large portion of his power, releasing the sparks back to their original bodies. This information was leaked and it took Devlatron a few centuries to make it seem more like it was a rumour than actual fact. Perhaps one of the best tricks Devlatron has played is making it seem like this information was just a rumour. Unbeknown to the residents of the Energon Isles, Devlatron staged a losing battle and the witnesses saw that after he lost, the sparks of his victims were not returned. In truth, he made a deal with his opponent to make it look like he had lost. In return, his opponent would have a portion of one of the Isles as his own and over time became Devlatron's right-hand man. Although this promotion happened over many centuries in order to make it look like there was no deal in the first place, since that time, no one has been strong enough to challenge and win against him due to his centuries of gaining sparks without anyone stopping him. Although, since this incident, Devlatron has kept the information a trusted secret, even from those closest to him. 
The one worry that plagues Devlatron is a slight paranoia that one day someone will be able to defeat him despite how powerful he has become. This has driven him to collect as many sparks as possible to ensure he is the most powerful Cybertronian in the Energon Isles, if not all of Cybertron. What did you guys think? Did you enjoy turning some of the Cuphead characters into Transformers? I'm really pleased with how they came out. I think Cuphead does look a little bit weird, but because of his features, it's got to be done. I just have to say, my favourite one of the lot is Devlatron. I think even though it's a simple design, it's come out really well. Let me know in the comments below which one's your favourite. If you like this video, turning Cuphead characters into Transformers, why not check out the Mighty Bus story arc? I take Transformers and I venomise them. We've got the Decepticons, the Autobots, the Predacons. So if you're interested in that, I'll put a link in the description below and a link somewhere on the screen. Monday will be our Community Reader episode, so I'm super excited about that one. There's been some amazing submissions, and I hope you guys check that out. Stay safe, everybody. I'll catch you next time.